What's up everybody, this is Dr. Ali Hader here, interventional cardiologist. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the basics of coronary anatomy, okay? Again, if you don't follow me on social media, check me out on Instagram at yourheartdoc or Twitter at yourheartdoc1. Definitely like this video, please share it with your friends and give me some comments on what you think. So we're gonna be talking about anatomy here. So this is the diagram of the heart we're gonna use. Now remember, the heart's a three-dimensional organ and we're gonna be looking sort of in two dimensions, so please keep that in mind. Let's get some landmarks. Over here is gonna be our left ventricle side. Over here is sort of gonna be our right atrium, okay? The left atrium is gonna be sort of sitting behind here, if you can imagine, it's a posterior structure. Whereas the right ventricle is gonna kind of sit anterior over here. So keep that in mind. Over here is our AV groove. Okay, this is the separation between the atria and the ventricles. And that's important because that's sort of where the right coronary artery and the circumflex are gonna run. Over here is our aortic valve. Up here is the aorta. These are our three coronary sinuses. And over here is gonna be our left coronary ostium, and here is the right coronary ostium. In terms of walls, up here is gonna be our anterior wall and anterolateral segments. Down here is our apex, and this is our inferior wall. So keep that in mind. Okay, so with that, let's start with the right coronary artery. This is gonna come off the right coronary os. It's gonna give this early branch, it's called the conus. And we're gonna get some these marginal branches that are gonna supply the right ventricle. The body of the right coronary is gonna come down along the AV groove. Okay, this is our RCA. Again, this is the conus up here. And these are RV marginal branches supplying the right ventricle. Okay, as this wraps around, it's gonna supply the inferior wall in most patients with the PDA, which is gonna sort of run along here. This is almost like a mirror image of the LED, as you'll see. Now, depending on the anatomy, there can be other branches here. Often you'll have at least one, if not more, RPL branches that supply more of the infralateral wall. And everybody's anatomy is a little different. It can be small, they can be big, uh, etc. So these are the basics of the right coronary artery. Moving on to the left, the left main is gonna be coming off Again, the left coronary ostium, okay? This is gonna bifurcate, in general bifurcate, into the LAD, the left anterior descending, which is gonna be coming down here. We're gonna get some diagonal branches supplying the anterolateral segments, and this is gonna come down around the apex that and generally supply some distal infraapical segments there. So this is our LAD, we'll put another septal here. We'll put another septal here. This is our LAD, okay? These are gonna be septal branches, of course supplying the septum, and these are gonna be diagonal branches. And these are supplying the anterolateral segments, okay? Now the circumflex, is a second artery coming off the left main. That's going to, again, go posteriorly, run along the AV groove, okay? Now we'll probably get a early branch here. This is, call this one of our OM. So this is our circumflex. This is an obtuse marginal artery. And the body of the circ is gonna run again behind us here, along the AV groove on the opposite side, mirror image of the right, and give some branches in the infralateral wall. Okay, so the circumflex, again, wrapping around, going behind along the AV groove, and it's gonna be giving off these lateral branches. So obtuse marginal one is the first branch, the second branch will be called obtuse marginal two and three, etc. Now, the higher the obtuse marginal branch is more anterolateral, whereas as you wrap around and go more distal, these are more infralateral branches. Okay, so there can be sort of overlap between obtuse marginal and diagonal, as you can see, depending on where they come off. Now, in some cases, you may even have a third artery coming off the left main. So you may have a branch here, 
Okay. The Ramus branch. Ramus branch, okay? So this is when you have a trifurcating left main. It's sort of just an anatomical variation. Ramus serves as basically the same thing as a very high obtuse marginal or a very high diagonal. It just happens to come off right in between the two, therefore it deserves its own name, the ramus. You'll see this in a small percentage of patients. Okay, quickly about dominance. Go to black here. Dominance. So what is dominance? Do we talk about right dominant? Okay, this is an 85% of the patients. Of people. This is when the PDA arises from the RCA. Okay, pretty simple. This is like exactly what we see here. The PDA is coming off the RCA. Okay, now the other people, left dominant, 15% of the people will have that. That's when the PDA comes off the circumflex. Okay, so in that situation, that situation, this would be very small. The right coronary would basically only be supplying RV marginals. It is not very important, okay? But the circumflex would be very, very large. It's gonna come down along the AV groove and supply the PDA, which we would call the LPDA, okay? So an LPDA means it's a PDA coming off the circumflex, left dominant, whereas an RPDA would mean right dominant. And again, um, important to know because in these cases, we don't really care much about the right coronary. Okay, so quickly now, I just wanna try to correlate some of what we know now to EKG territory, right? So when we're trying to localize a patient with a STEMI, for example, um, we're looking at the leads in the EKG that are sort of representing which arterial territory is involved. So first off, down here on the inferior wall, leads two, three, and F. These are gonna be representing what's going on inferiorly and infralaterally. So the PDA, RPL, all the territories involved with the RCA are generally gonna be reflected by these leads. Now, if you look, the circumflex also comes down and supplies these sort of infralateral leads. So the circumflex also can show evidence of leads two, three, and F. And again, it all depends on where these branches are actually coming off and um, what's being um, represented. Now, when you're in these infralateral segments, like these distal obtuse marginals, or perhaps there's another PL sitting over here, you're gonna get some lateral involvement. So think of this as be behind us here. That's the kind of the infralateral segment, right? That's gonna show evidence of V5 and V6 often as these lateral leads, okay? Now, looking at the LED in general, the precordial leads are what's going to show LED involvement. So V1, V2, V3 and V4. Think of these as our anterior leads, okay? Now V1, we call this the septal lead. So if you see ST elevation in V1, you know it's gonna be approximately, probably before the first major septal here, okay? So that's important to know. Also, sometimes V1, which is sort of a right-sided lead, can also show up in terms of right ventricular infarct. So if you have inferior elevations, with a V1 involvement, think of a proximal RCA with right ventricular involvement. Whereas if you have all the precordial leads involved, all right, and V1, think of a very proximal LED involvement, okay? Now leads one and L, leads one and L are sort of our high lateral leads, okay? Now these are lateral leads, but they're more sort of the anterolateral segments, right? So you're gonna see this high obtuse marginals, ramus branch that we saw before, diagonal involvement. So oftentimes you're gonna see precordial leads with AV1, with lead one and L when you have a big LED involving a large diagonal, okay? But you could also see one and L involvement sometimes even in isolation if there's an obtuse marginal branch or that ramus branch that we talked about, okay? So that's again, sort of the basics. Hopefully this gave you a little bit of the lay of the land um, on coronary anatomy and a little bit on its correlations with EKGs. And um, if you have any questions, please hit me up. Again, these were really basic. There's a lot of variations in patient's anatomy, but I think understanding the basics is critical. So again, please smash that like button, share the video if you liked it, and leave me a comment. Until next time.